when we talk about predation, we also have to talk about the various defensive strategies that prey can use. So uh, we've got four main categories of defensive strategies, and even things that are immobile, like plants and funguses, can use these strategies as well. They just use it in different ways. So the four main ones that we talk about are camouflage, mimicry, perfective, protective mechanisms, excuse me, and chemical defensives. Now, of course, there's nothing that says an organism only has to use one. You can use camouflage and be poisonous. You can have protective mechanisms, thorns, and also try to use some mimicry. Nothing stops you from using just one except uh, natural selection. So camouflage is one that we know pretty well. It involves trying to blend into the background, like this moth is pretending to be a leaf and doing a very good job of it. And this brings up a really important thing about camouflage. Camouflage is often about colors and patterns that let you blend in. But anything to break up an organism's shape, to change its silhouette, to make it look like something else, that's also a really important part of camouflage. So you will sometimes have snakes whose faces look like leaves so that they can blend into the litter on the ground. You have insects that are shaped like uh, tree branches. And it's not just to make them hide better. It's also to break up the shape that predators are looking for. Both the color and the shape are important to that. And of course, as well, when we talk about camouflage, this isn't just used defensively. Lots of predators will use camouflage in order to ambush prey as well. Mimicry is another one. In mimicry, you have one organism that's trying to look like another organism. So sometimes this can be something as simple as trying to evolve a pattern that looks similar to another species that is poisonous. A good example of that is your monarch butterfly and your viceroy butterfly. Monarch butterflies are uh, slightly poisonous and they taste very bad to birds. And they have that very distinctive orange and black pattern on their wings. Viceroy butterflies have a not quite the same pattern but a very similar pattern that has evolved over time because birds have learned to avoid that orange and black pattern, but they're not poisonous. Birds could eat them just fine. What they're doing is they're just riding the coattails of the monarchs. Uh, same sort of thing if you've ever seen hoverflies in the summer. Hoverflies look like bees and wasps. You can tell they're not because they fly very differently. They fly like flies. In fact, they are some of the best flyers on the planet. So they can literally stay in one place and just dart around you. And you will never see a wasp or a bee that agile. But a bird that's looking for food isn't going to look at how they're flying. It's going to look at the yellow and black pattern that they have on their bodies. And that is a warning sign. And it is 100% entirely a bluff. Also, don't mistakenly kill hoverflies because they eat aphids. They're really good animals. Anyhow, uh, another common strategy is the use of eye spots. So eye spots don't necessarily try to make an organism look exactly like another one, but like these caterpillars and the one snake that's in there, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make it look, make themselves look scary. So oftentimes you'll see on butterflies and moths, they have these big circles. Well, what it is, is it's actually an eye spot so that when the insect opens up its wings, it looks for a moment like, oh, there's a big giant bird that's right there. And that's often enough to trigger the fight or flight response in smaller birds, which helps keep them safe. But caterpillars do this as well. They just try to look like snakes instead. 
protective mechanisms is a really, really bland way of saying anything that makes you harder to get eaten. So oftentimes, like the horned lizard here, you have horns and spines. But you can also just have a hard shell. That's also a protective mechanism. It's just a uh, less painful one for the predator. And they're just different types of strategies. The note for protective mechanisms, though, is they are physical defenses. And they are different than chemical defenses. Chemical defenses are just chemicals that are either harmful or agitating to other organisms. Some of them are lethal. Many of them are not. Uh, a lot of people think that chili peppers have a chemical defense of you don't want to eat them so they taste hot. We're not so sure about that, but it is still, capsation is still a chemical defense. We think, though, it has more to do with defending against insects and funguses than it does with mammals like us, because obviously we quite like it, which is why we keep breeding ridiculous ridiculous peppers that have way more capsaicin in them than they need, like the California Reaper. And just a note on terminology as well, because people confuse these a lot. An animal is venomous if it's injecting its toxin into a prey. So if you're using it for hunting and you're injecting it, that's venom. Although I guess sea urchins are also technically venomous. It's poisonous if something eats you and they get the toxin as part of a chemical defense. So uh, if you have a butterfly, like your monarch butterfly, that's a poison, not a venom. And it might seem like it's pedantic little things, but science is based off of pedantic little things and people love to mark you down on pedantic little things on tests. So make sure you keep them straight.